It's good to be back with everyone tonight. Uh, turn your Bibles with us today to the book of Matthew and uh, the 14th chapter. Matthew 14, and we want to preach on uh, blessings and, and growth. Before we start, we want to open with a word of prayer. Lord, we bow before you tonight, God, and we just ask, Lord, you have your way with us. God bless us as we look at the word tonight, Lord, and uh, anoint us, God, from on high. We just pray, Lord, that we would all receive from the word tonight what you would have us to. We ask it all in Jesus' name, and amen. I want to read from Matthew 17, just one verse before we uh, get to the text tonight. Jesus had sent the disciples away to do work, and one of the works they were doing was casting out demons. And they come to a place where they rebuked one, but they, they couldn't cast him out. So they come to Jesus in Matthew 17, verse 19, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not... Or why could not we cast him out? Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. And we'll stop reading right there. That verse come to my mind. When that verse come to my mind this week, I thought about the phrase, What do you need? You know, we, we all want God's blessing and we all want growth in our spiritual life. We want to get closer to Him. And you know, as, as God told Moses, my presence will go with you, Moses said, let me see you. Let me see you. Moses had a desire to see God and, you know, I want that same desire in myself as well. Jesus said that He would come to us and He would what? Manifest himself to us. And you know, he will do those things for us. And we want to talk about receiving those blessings. And we want to talk about growing in that way tonight. And we go to a very familiar story, the feeding of the 5,000 for this. Now, we're going to start at the 13th verse of this chapter. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. Now, as we talk about this, I want to look and think about the dedication that this group had of following Jesus. I firmly believe that Scripture teaches us that God wants to bless his people. God wants us to grow spiritually and he wants to give spiritual blessings to us. When Jesus said he would manifest himself to us, I believe that he meant what he said. He would show himself to us. Brother Tim said that the preaching of the cross, the story of the cross never gets old. And that's true. It only gets deeper and deeper as you grow in this thing. And God wants to continue to take us on this path. But you see, there needs to be a dedication from us in following him. The modern church today has lost that. This group here, though, followed Jesus on foot. They were dedicated to following Christ. And you know, we need to make sure that we are dedicated to following Christ. Not a church, not a particular church. Yes, we should have a home church, but the, the dedication should not be following the church. The dedication should not be following a certain preacher. The dedication should not be to a certain denomination. No, the dedication in our life needs to be to following Christ and wanting to see Him. Amen. Being like Moses and saying, no, I, I want to see you. Show yourself to me. And so as we go on down through here, Actually, let me go ahead and read the rest of the story, and then we'll go through the points in the verses we want to look at. So we read the 13th verse. They followed him on foot out of the cities. And though continues, it says, And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place. And the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the village and buy themselves 
victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to the disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained twelve <laughs> baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men beside women and children. Now we often call this the feeding of the 5,000, but there was actually more there as we see. But as we said, they received a blessing. We want to receive blessings. They saw miracles. We want to see miracles. We want growth, and certainly growth was going to happen as they saw these things come about. But as we said at the very beginning, the first thing we need to, to make sure is that there is a, a dedication to following our Lord to loving him above everything. The church at Ephesus in the book of Revelation, they had everything that a church could have going for it. They had great works. They did not allow evil. They did not want evil around. They said, no, we don't want any of that. But yet, when it came time, and, and Jesus commended them on that, he said, that's great, that's wonderful. But he says, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. We need to make sure that the first love in our life is Jesus. Otherwise, there will be no spiritual blessings and there will be no spiritual growth happening. And so this group obviously had a dedication. They went out on foot. Went out on foot. I can remember stories of years back here in the, the old time Christians here uh, at, at this church. Of course, I wasn't saved then, but I can remember them telling stories about walking to this church. They would live on this road or they lived up hollers off of this road. They would walk to church. Walk to church in the summer. They would walk to church in the winter. They would walk to church in the rain because they wanted to come to the house of God. I think that's absolutely wonderful and amazing. And so in the 14th verse, though, it says, Jesus went forth and, and saw the great multitude. And it says, and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick. Notice the flow of this. They had a dedication and said, we are going to follow him. Then it says that he was moved with compassion. It was because of their dedication and faithfulness to him that he was then moved with compassion. Now, don't make no mistake. I'm not talking about love. We know the Lord already loved them. Because the Bible teaches he came to bear the sins of each and every individual. But he was moved with compassion toward them because of their dedication to him. He saw that. God sees us. God sees whether or not there is dedication from us to him. God knows what the most important things in our lives really are. I can stand up here as a pastor and I can, I can tell you guys, well, you know, I, I read and I study every day and I really dig in the Word. But God knows whether I do or really not, you see. Uh, we always tend to put our, our, best, our best spiritual lives forward when we're in the church house. But God knows what really is going on. And He knows whether there's dedication there, whether there's faithfulness there. Jesus saw their faithfulness. And the Bible says he was moved with compassion toward them. And he did what? He healed their sick. You know, we, I, I do believe that miracles still take place in this world without question. Um, I, I, I spoke of a miracle during my testimony. My son is without question a miracle. They told us, the doctor in Lexington that we went to said... I never tell people there's a zero chance. He says, but you're about as close as one can get. Yeah. But you know what? When they were dismissing us from the hospital, the doctor said, I don't have any explanation as to, as to how he come through all this. He knew it wasn't the medicine. It had to be the Lord. And you know, I'm bringing all that up to say this. Just because there is sickness in the world, don't think that God still isn't moved with compassion towards 
those who might be sick, even though they might not be healed. You see, this was a, a special time in history. Jesus, the Son of God, walked on the earth. And He was taking care of all the problems that sin had brought forth. He would lay the hands on, he would, he would do whatever it took to heal the sick. He was moved with compassion. God can be moved with compassion towards us if we are dedicated and faithful to him. As I said, his love was, was always there. But, you know, it was their unworried dedication to him. Yeah, that really sticks out in my mind. Their unworried dedication towards him. You say, what do you mean by unworried dedication? What I mean by that is, as we see the story play out, they didn't have food. In other words, they didn't, they didn't make a big plan about what they were going to bring with them. They said, Jesus is going here. I'm going where Jesus is. I said, I'm not worried about packing food. The word of the Lord and seeing the Lord was more important than the food to them. And, and I think that's important for us. As I've said, I think God has... Life is wonderful. Heaven's going to be greater, don't get me wrong. Eternity in the new earth is going to be even greater. But life can be absolutely amazing sometimes, even with all of its problems. And I think God, as, as best as we can, we should enjoy the things of life. But we should enjoy the Lord Jesus even more. To the point that we're not worried so much about these other things. No, Jesus is here. This is where I'm going. Uh, I'm a pastor. I'm a preacher. Uh, Tim's already mentioned it a little bit tonight. And I'm not saying anyone here is doing this. I don't know people's hearts. But I know I talk to other pastors, other preachers. There, there's a lot of people tonight who... In this country, particularly, who are loving a whole lot more things than they are the Lord because sure. they don't come to the Lord's house. Sure. Just, just a quick thing to throw out there. You know, you know, a pastor can't get, can't get uh, uh, if he's got an opportunity to talk about church attendance, he will. But moving on, in the fifteenth verse, and when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, "This is a desert place." And the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. Now, let's stop right there for just a moment. Because what we are talking about is getting in a place and being in a place where God's blessings are happening. And growth is happening in our life. We read from Matthew 17. Just a little bit ago. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. I do not believe that Jesus had the intention, although it's obviously possible, the intention for us to move a literal mountain. I believe what he is trying to get through to us is that, listen, our faith in him can take care of any problem that needs to be taken care of. And so when I read that, I thought, what is it that we need in our life? What, what thing do you need to grow past? Or what area of your life do you need to be blessed in spiritually? Now, that brings us to what the disciples said. The disciples said, this is a desert place. This is a wilderness. We're in an isolated area. And when I thought about that and, and read that, my mind went to the crowd who was dedicated to following the Lord, followed him, which means he was leading, but it led them to a desert place. Listen, growth, sometimes the most important growth, happens when you're in a desert place. Now that doesn't mean that God isn't going to bless you. But it might mean that there'll be some times of deep struggle. There'll be some times of fighting in your mind, fighting in your emotions, and your faith might feel like it's getting a bit weak. That's what the desert place feels like. But listen, this is where the Lord led them to. I mention this semi-regularly. 
Sometimes it's not necessarily the spiritual warfare that gets us down as so much as the fact that we sometimes think or buy into the lie that if we were stronger than we uh, were or that if we were really in the will of God, we wouldn't even be in a place where the enemy is fighting us, where the enemy is making us doubt, where the enemy is bringing up temptation after temptation. But listen, the Bible says after Jesus was baptized, he was led of the Spirit into the wilderness for to be tempted of the devil. Sometimes God's leading leads us into a desert place. But that doesn't mean God can't feed you in the desert place. And it doesn't mean God isn't going to take you out of the desert place. You see, they followed him there. He led them there. But in the 16th verse it says, But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. Now, I want to switch gears here for, for just a little bit. We're talking about blessings and growth. Um, sometimes people need to learn to be a blessing in order to grow. You say, what do you mean by that? Sometimes people will either, they're either listening to their own self-doubt or they're listening to the enemy tell them when they have a testimony uh, no one cares about your testimony. It's not good enough. Don't give it. Well, I, I got a song on my heart, but I can't really sing all that good. And Satan says, well, just don't do it then. And, and people don't do it. But when we put ourselves out there for his purpose, and we'll see this here in just a minute, when we put ourselves out for his purpose, a growth will happen within us and not only will the growth happen within us, but we will also be a blessing and a help to others as well. You see, we're all in this together. Right. We're all on the same road. Right. And we all need to hear each other's testimonies, each right. other's songs. We need to hear about each other's struggles and each other's mountaintops. We need all of that combined together on this walk of life. Now, what Jesus was doing, though, he was making a point with the disciples. You see, he told them, they need not depart, give ye them to eat. Now, if we was to put that into modern English, he was saying, well, they don't have to leave. You give them something to eat. Here's where it gets interesting. You give them something, Jesus told the disciples. Well, the disciples say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. That's a great important point. A great important point. Because they knew the crowd around, and they knew what they had, and they knew they didn't have enough. Oh, when we get to a place when we really just reside to the fact that we don't have enough, <laughs> then we can start to be blessed. I mean, when we just give in to the fact that, hey, maybe my testimony isn't a, a big fiery testimony, but I'm going to give it for the Lord, but then, then things can really happen. When you reside to the fact that maybe I'm not the best singer, but I'm going to go sing for the Lord. Maybe I'm not the best witness to someone, but I'm going to go tell them Jesus loves them anyway. You see, we may not have enough within us for it to make a difference. But they took what they had, and Jesus says, bring them hither to me. Bring them to me. See, we've we got to realize we, we don't have enough. But at the same time, don't let not having enough stop you. So what do we do if we don't have enough? We well, see, we, we bring it to him. Testimonies, witnessing, singing, preaching, teaching, and just really all around life in general, whatever it is that we do. If we bring it to him for his glory and his purpose alone, great things can happen. Amen. Just for his glory and his purpose alone. I This hit me because of Sunday. Sunday uh, didn't feel like, I knew that was the message I, I was supposed to preach. And preachers, preachers know when it's the message. Sometimes you don't know. But sometimes when you know it, you just know. Yep. Tim knows what I'm talking about. 
but I didn't feel like I did a great job with it. And, you know, I, I'm thankful for everyone's compliments and, and everything. I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, but you know what? This hit me. It's not about, if, if I come up and say what the Lord's given me to say, it's not about how I say it. It's not about how good I say it. It's not about how emotional I get or don't get. If I bring it to him and say, use it for your glory, he can use it for his glory. Amen. Your testimony, your song, your witness, whatever it is, your giving, your giving, whether it be to the church, whether it be to a ministry you support personally, whatever it is, just, just give it, give it to him for his purpose. Now, after they did that, the Bible says in the 19th verse that he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. Another important point of blessing and growth is that it comes from obedience. He told the multitude, it says he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. I'm not going to hit on this a super long time. We've, we've preached on this so many times, but... As I look at many a modern Christian, not all, but some, one thing that is, is missing, and it's why the power in the church houses is missing, is because we don't obey. He is our king, our God, our creator, our redeemer. And so when he commands, we need to listen. Sometimes it's hard to listen. Sometimes he commands us to do things we don't like to do. But we still need to obey and we right. still need to listen. Sometimes we fall short. Not intentionally maybe, but we fall short in listening to him and obeying to him. Okay, when we do, we, we come before him and we say, God, I, I messed it up. Forgive me. And he does. But we need to... To obey. And blessing and growth come from continued obedience. Okay, so, so moving on. So the Bible says that the multitude sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke. This is kind of going back to what I talked about just a little bit ago. You, you might look at yourself, and you know, going back to Matthew 17, I don't know what you might need tonight. I don't know what area you need blessed in. I don't know what area you need growth in. Um, I don't know what your struggle might be right now. I don't know what you're trying to learn in your Bible study. I, I don't know any of that. But I know that it says if, if we'll trust, because that's what faith is, it's trust. We might not understand something completely in the present, but God says trust me. God just says, trust me. Jesus told the disciples, he said, unless you convert and become as little children, you shall in no wise enter in. What was he saying there? Was he saying for us to act like little kids? No. He was saying, trust like a child would trust their parents. Growing up, I never, I never once asked mom and dad, did you pay the water bill this month? Did you, are you going to go to the grocery store? Did you get gas in the car? You going to do my laundry? Never asked them that. Why? I knew it was going to be done. God says, just trust me. Just trust me. And with everything that we can do, like I said, testimony, singing, preaching, teaching, witnessing, giving, needing help, needing guidance, needing God to open his word, needing God to show himself to us. He can do all of that if we just place these things in his hands. You see, when something is placed in his hands for his glory, there is without question blessing and growth will happen. It will happen. If you place yourself fully in his hands, it don't matter how little you think you have. If you want to testify for him for his glory, he can use that to save someone's soul. Sure. If you want to sing for his glory, say, I might not be, I'm not, I'm not the greatest singer. But you sing for his glory and you listen to what he tells you to sing. That might be the very thing that a soul needed to lift them up. Might be the very thing a soul needed to be convicted. Whatever the case might be. And so he took that and he gave to his disciples. And the disciples gave it to the multitude. 
You know, th this thought is sticking with me, so I just want to say this very quickly. As far as like giving, and I'm not speaking, the church is fine financially. I'm speaking more so of, of missionary giving or giving to a, a certain ministry. I thought, you know, there are people out there who might look at what they have, and God might be moving them to give something. And maybe they might be thinking, well, you know, I, I can only give a little bit. This, this little bit probably won't matter for a whole lot. When you give a little bit and you give it all for the glory of God, he can take that little bit and he can multiply it exponentially. Exponentially. You can't outgive and you can't outdo the Lord. And so the disciples learned a valuable lesson here. Because what do we see in verse 20? And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up the fragments that remained, 12 baskets full. Every person got filled up and there was a, a basket left for each disciple. But you know what I want to close with? I want to close with this. There's ups and downs in our growth as Christians. There's ups and downs in spiritual blessings. Don't forget what God has done for you in the past. Because he'll do it again in the future and even more so. You see, this wasn't the only time that Jesus done a miracle where he fed many people. This was the first time that it's recorded. But you see, if, if we move ahead to Matthew chapter 15, and I, I don't know how much time passed between what is recorded in Matthew 14 and what is recorded in Matthew 15, because remember, we are told that all the books of the world couldn't hold all the miracles that Jesus did. But I thought about the disciples here in Matthew chapter 15. Matthew 15, 33 is what is called the feeding of the 4,000. Pretty much a, a very similar situation. And Jesus didn't want to send the crowd away. He didn't want them to, to faint in the way, it says in the 32nd verse. And so in the 33rd verse, it says, And his disciples say unto him, Whence should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? Jesus says, give them something to eat. And they said, well, how in the world are we going to feed so many people? And for us reading that, we are like, how in the world? Because they have possibly forgotten that he fed 5,000, probably at least actually 7,000. How could they have forgotten such a thing? But think back to your own life and how we forget where God has taken us from and how he's blessed us in the past. Absolutely. We forget. Yes. Don't forget it. Keep trusting. Keep holding on to him. 